What's up everybody, it's your boy Meme here. I just got some new EpiPens, so they're right here. Now they're not there anymore, that was just deodorant. Whoa! Whoa! Uh, for breakfast I had um, two eggs on toast. It's really raining outside. I don't, hold on, I gotta, <laughs> one sec. I opened my window. I had to pause the video because, uh, full disclosure, I don't have pants on right now, but yeah, it's it's really raining out there. I had to open my window. I'm going to close it now. Yeah, super raining outside. It's crazy. Uh, yeah, I had five packages of oatmeal, um, which is like 700 calories, I think. And uh, I also had two eggs on two toasts, and that was good. That my mom made. My mom made those too, and those were very tasty. Uh, for lunch, I had quinoa salad, uh, and for dinner, I had pizza. Uh, my parents ordered pizza, and uh, I heated up the pizza when I got home uh, today. School was good. Um, I woke up at 5.10. Um, I left at 7.03. Um, Um, in English 101, we got the, um, the assignment for our English. Um, it's due next Wednesday. Not this, up, uh, not tomorrow, but, like, the Wednesday after that. Um, I wrote down some notes, uh, about the description of the essay. Uh, something that he mentioned is how, um, we're trying not to interpret the text. We're just trying to sort of intuit, just sort of, like, don't don't say what Hannah Arendt means by this. Just sort of describe the phenomena. And uh, I wrote down two paragraphs of sort of stream of consciousness notes. The way I write notes um, is I sort of try to consume the information in my head. And if it's something I don't think I'll remember, I look at the teacher while I'm writing the notes on my computer. Luckily, I can touch type, so I, I can pay attention and, and type the notes at the same time. But it results in sort of a lackluster note-taking style. But I wrote, these are the two important bolded paragraphs I wrote. Um, the simplest way to get your brain thinking in analysis mode, which is good, which is good, uh, is to avoid summarization. Uh, but it also has everything to do with how you begin your sentences and what your sentence subject is. Don't do this. And it's saying to not start a sentence by saying, like start a paragraph by saying, Arendt notes the relationship between society and culture throughout the text because, you know, that's your first instinct, and it will lead you to being like, oh, Arendt is doing this, and then this, and then this, and then eventually it will be like, she means this, you know, she means this by all these things she's saying. You shouldn't say that, because only Arendt knows what she means, right? Um, instead, you, instead of saying, Arendt notes the relationship between society and culture throughout the text, instead say, the relationship between society and culture dominates the text. Don't even mention Hannah. Just mention the concept, you know, and don't try to interpret it. Um, yeah, you're, you're analyzing the ideas, not what Hannah Arendt is saying. Um, so, um, uh, another paragraph I wrote is, so basically it's, uh, it's like a 27 page essay. We're going to be analyzing one paragraph from it. Maximum four pages in the essay, but it can be a little longer. It can be a little shorter. Uh, it's just what matters is the granularity of the essay and whatever um, whatever text length results in that is sort of what you have to deal with. But uh, we're going for this level of granularity. So like if Hannah starts a sentence saying under modern conditions, this um, you know, this is a pronoun and it must be spoken about and you need to like look at the paragraph before this and the paragraph before that to find out what this means. So define this. Um, you also have to find out what she means by modern conditions. And if she's referring to society and culture, uh, you have to find out what her definitions of society and her definitions of culture are throughout the text. She also very commonly uses mass society and mass culture as sort of a um, a juxtaposition of society and culture, so you also have to define those. Um, and, you know, if she mentions how 
if she mentions like vacant time, well, if she mentions free time, she's either referring to vacant time or she's referring to leisure time. And she also refers back to those. And like, it's in like a sentence, she uses a whole bunch of words and refers to a whole bunch of different things that she defines earlier in the essay. So even though you're just defining a pair, you're just analyzing a paragraph, you're really analyzing sort of a larger, um, like you're sort of doing a larger analysis of the text by going really granular on one paragraph, right? Um, and it sort of goes to, the whole point is that eventually um, it should just come naturally, like you should read a paragraph and sort of just be aware of the subject and the, uh, like the parentheticals and like what it's defining. So then you can read more complex texts and it makes more sense. Um, like this Hannah Arendt essay, if you watch my video about me reading it, it's all very sort of wordy and um, it seems like she's kind of talking in circles but she's just making sure you sort of understand the concepts and it's all very like you've got to be very 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 intentional in particular when reading the text because otherwise it's just gonna sound like she's saying the same things over and over but it's not true because she wouldn't say the same things over and over if they didn't need to so you know uh, and then there's interpersonal communications class um, we talked about the interpersonal gap um, and the interpersonal gap is basically like when I'm talking to someone, I have a filter and they have a filter and the gap is the space between those two filters. So the thing you want to try and do is just have one filter or just delete the filter. So then the person has a complete understanding of what's happening in your mind. Um, and there was an example, I forgot the wife's name, but I'm just going to call her Sally. Uh, there is an example of, um, Tom and Sally are like husband and wife. And uh, Tom used to work with this woman called Jane several years ago. And Jane is coming into the city for a business trip. And Jane hasn't seen Tom in years. So Tom is like, hey Jane, you should come over to our house. You can you can stay here for three days while you do your business trip. And uh, you know, my wife can meet you and uh, we could have you over for dinner, you know, a few nights. She's like, okay, great. So she comes over, Jane comes over to Tom and Sally's house and um, you know, they have dinner and uh, Jane is like, and you know, once they finish eating, right? Um, Jane is like, okay, I'm gonna help you with dishes. And you know, Sally's getting up, she's getting ready to do dishes. She's like, you really don't have to help, you know? And Jane's like, no, I insist. I, I insist to help with dishes. So she goes into the kitchen, um, you know, she helps with dishes and you know, when they're done, you know, Jane is like, wow, you know, that was fast. Good thing we did it with two people. And uh, Sally's like, yeah, thank you. Um, but, you know, later that night, uh, Tom's in bed, Sally's getting ready for bed, and she's like, I can't believe Jane humiliated me like that. And Tom's like, what are you talking about? And um, Jane's saying that, um, you know, uh, she, she insisted on uh, doing the dishes uh, even when she said no, and she sort of from from Jane's pers from Sally's perspective, Jane implied that she wasn't a very good housekeeper because it's like, oh, look at how fast this is with two people. Luckily, we didn't have you doing it because you're so slow. Like that was Sally's impression, and uh, I thought that Sally was being a crazy person, right? Because you always help with dishes once dinner's over. Um, but you know, a good like 35% of the class, I would say. Um, sort of thought that Jane was in the wrong, like how Sally thought Jane was in the wrong. And that was surprising to me, but um, something that they really focused on, and this was, I thought this was just like a throwaway comment, but something they had really focused on is how, um, you know, Sally asked Jane not to help with dishes, and it's Sally's house, you know, and under under Sally's house, you followed Sally's rules, and her one of her rules was to not help with dishes, and Jane had like disobeyed that rule. And, you know, I thought, you know, that was sort of an enlightening concept. It, it was so interesting because um, I thought Sally was acting like a complete crazy person, but I didn't realize that like, man, yeah, I guess, I, I guess like, like, man, like, I, I, I guess like, it, it was just crazy to me that people think different ways, you know, and you've got to be sure. And that was an example of the interpersonal gap, right? Um, Jane 
thought that she was helping the dinner and thought Sally was satisfied with her helping because she was like, yeah, thank you, because she didn't want to be rude in the moment. Um, and uh, Jane thought that Sally was doing weird, like, psyops on her, right? Um, which her, from her perspective, I'm sure made a lot of sense, right? And uh, from a lot of people's perspective, it made a lot of sense. And, which is interesting. I never really considered like the rules of the house like that, but you know, that's just, that, that's just like my culture and the way I was raised. And you know, it's something, that's not something you would super think about. Like, of course, you know, if you enter someone's home and it's like a, like a shoes off household, of course you take off your shoes, but like, you know, specific stuff like that, you know, I never really think of that. And it's, it's really interesting because like, you know, interpersonal communication, that's not a, stupid requirement throw away class. It's, it's teaching me interesting things. Um, and then there is math class and you know I feel like every other math class is something I don't get uh, but the math classes where I do get things I get very sleepy. Um, I went to class and it was polynomials and I just got it. I, I did I was really good at polynomials in junior year. I was really good at polynomials in senior year um, and I had no trouble and it was just kind of boring. Um, but you know uh, you know, it's good that they do the same amount of detail on everything because I don't really get radicals. And I'm sure there are a lot of people in that class who really got radicals, like how I got polynomials. And, you know, I'm happy they're treating both with the same sort of intention, right? Um, God, uh, I was going to mention something. What, what was I going to talk about? Oh yeah. So, um, I had... I think 1.1 grams of caffeine today. And uh, I think that's bad for you. <laughs> um, luckily, I'm not a crazy person having it in these sugar, sugar pumped, I'm not drinking my calories, you know, with, with this caffeine consumption. This morning I had two cans of coffee that were 225 milligrams of caffeine each. And when I got to school, I had another two cans of coffee that I brought from home that were both 225 milligrams of caffeine each. Um, and then after my literature class, I was in the bookstore getting a notebook for interpersonal communications class because she mentioned that you'll need a notebook for the class and I hadn't bothered to get one until then. And, uh, you know, I saw a, a fridge that was full of energy drinks and I was like, well, I might as well, if I'm already here, I might as well get an energy drink. Not thinking that I had already drank like 900 milligrams of caffeine and this energy drink had 200 milligrams of caffeine. And so I was in, I was in interpersonal communications class. There was 1.1 grams of caffeine inside of me. And I was, um, I was sort of tweaking, uh, for the first 20 minutes or so of class. I was sort of like, I was staring the teacher directly in the face. I was gripping onto my chair and I knew I kind of looked like a crazy person, but I, you know, my hands would sort of start shaking if I let my hands off the armrests. Um, so, you know, I thought I was like, man, this class sucks. You know, my heart rate was like 75 and I was sitting down like a crazy person. And, um, you know, I get pretty into caffeine. I drink a lot of caffeine and then I sort of am off caffeine and I just <laughs> replace my caffeine consumption with, uh, with aspirin <laughs> for the headaches. Um, and then I sort of get on caffeine again once my tolerance is back down. But um, I think caffeine is generally like, I'm not, I'm not super good with self-control when it comes to substances like that. It's like, you know, even if I'm at a party, I don't drink. Um, it's, and of, co of course that would also be illegal, right? It would, it would also be illegal. I, ne I never do something illegal. But, you know, I don't drink because I, you know, I feel like I'm not, I'm not good with that sort of thing, right? And, uh, you know, I've shown in the past with, like, other things, and uh, I feel like I've shown up a little bit with caffeine, you know, maybe I just can't, maybe I just can't control myself with substances. So, um, I think maybe I should maybe, you know, maybe not tomorrow, maybe not the next day, but I think, I think I'm, I think getting off caffeine generally is probably on the table for the future, because it's, you know, it, 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 costs a lot of money, the, the habit. And um, it also, it's just, it's bad for you. You should only, honestly, you should only be drinking water. And I've heard coffee's pretty good for you. Um, but, you know, like you should be drinking water and like maybe some very, very, very like 
like like mild tea maybe like it's you know the human liver wasn't made to drink rock star energy right or, or i think i drank celsius i think was the energy drink i drank and it, it was tasty actually but um you know the human body is not meant to drink celsius right um the human body is meant to drink exclusively water i actually have a app that tracks it on my phone i haven't drank soda in um 15 days and, and 14 hours and 32 minutes and 24 seconds right um and the thing is is that sure you know i'm not drinking soda anymore but you know what's the point of that if i'm exercising less right and not only that but i'm also um you know under eating sometimes i i've been pretty good with that you know my, my weight's not like my, my weight hasn't really gone down the past two months it's been sort of around 160 a little like just under 160 generally um so i, I i've been good with eating but you know uh you know what's the point of not drinking soda when you're exercising less and when you're still drinking like crazy crazy energy drinks that probably give me cancer and we just don't know about it yet and just like weird stuff like that just like weird stuff you know um and honestly i just i should only be drinking water and you should only be drinking water um you know it's probably good for you if we only drink water but you know yeah uh that's pretty much it i'm just hanging out uh yeah i think i think that's it and it's not really raining anymore <laughs> um you know seattle weather people i i i've heard it's a thing where people when they're describing their city they talk about how it's cloudy one second and then it's sunny the next you know it's it's raining and then it's and then it's sunny right and uh i think i think maybe that's a pretty common descriptor for cities <laughs> maybe that just happens in the world right but um you know hate to say but in seattle in seattle one moment it's raining the next moment it's sunny whoa whoa guys this only happens in seattle um but you know it's not raining anymore when it was really raining earlier which is crazy because you would expect it to be sort of a long thing if it's raining but clouds move fast um Okay, I think that's it. I think I'm. Um, I think I'm out of here now. Am I out of here? Oh, I've really wanted to. Um, there are these uh, things called REITs, R E I T S, and uh, it stands for Real Estate Investment Term. I, not term. It stands for something, and it's like it, it's like a stock that you buy and sell, right? Um, except instead of investing in stock, invest in a company. Well, you're still investing in stock, but you're investing in a company that owns commercial real estate. And they're legally obligated to give you a lot of their money in dividends, right? And the really cool thing about it is that, you know, not only do you get a lot of dividends, but, you know, you're also investing specifically in real estate. And real estate and stocks are pretty separate. I was thinking about investing in REITs, uh, but honestly, the return looks pretty much the same if you invest in like an index fund long term um and honestly i don't know if that's worth like i don't know if investing in reits is worth it because i'm already invested in like like my largest holding is a is a zero mar is like a like a zero uh is is fzrlx right um so what you know i'm already invested in real estate right uh through a total market index fund so What's even the point of investing in a, of investing in a, a REIT, you know? Um, yeah. Oh, now it's raining now. Whoa. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, see you.